Hey, today I'm going to show how to set up the newest multi-angle side lighting iris camera. You start by pushing in these two buttons to open the case. And then I start with grabbing the camera like so with three fingers. Hold the phone down and uh, that set it down. Um, I've got the uh, electronic flash, external flash, and the illuminator itself. The easy way to get it is to hold it with your left hand and lift it out like that. That's how I put it in, lift it out. You could take the cords out too at this point. You can use the USB cord and the HDMI cord. And I'm also including a, a shutter release, which is sort of convenient. And that plugs into the bottom socket here um, so that when you're taking uh, the picture you can just push that handheld button instead of reaching for the picture taking button and uh, most of those cords are not necessary none of them are necessary to show how to use the camera so I'll set that aside for a moment and <clears throat> the second part is the chin rest <clears throat> which is shown how to assemble in a separate video so that is ready to go right here and the first step in assembling these these there's just these four components then the uh, illuminator uh, the external flash and the camera those are the three photo and then the chin rest so I'll show how that fits together uh, the first step is to take the illuminator. For this I take it with my left hand and grab it. I put my thumb there just to get a good hold from the handle and it slides on with this dovetail Arca Swiss mount and it goes right onto <clears throat> the chin rest which is right here it slides into this Arca Swiss dovetail track. It's uh, about five and a half inches, 120 millimeters. And uh, again, I just lift this up like so. And the way I like to start it off is I just set the tap, the corner here, and keep it level, and then rotate it so that the other corner gets into place. And then once it's about a half inch in, then you know it's on both sides and you push it forward all the way and here you want to uh, feel for it being flush on the ends and then tighten up this knob here so you you could put the camera first onto the illuminator and then attach it but it's slightly easier to put the illuminator on first and then um, I grab the camera here like so and this will sl also slide onto this uh, Arca Swiss a dovetail and that is a short one but when you put this camera on you have the whole area open here and you can bring it over you don't have to go from back here you might bump into some just bring it over to here and again I like to rest the corner here make sure it's level and then straighten it forward and slide it until it's fully flush on both sides, fully inserted, and then I tighten this down here. And that's how that is set up. Now, um, the third step is to add on this electronic flash, and it has a swivel, so it, you want it on the 90 degree setting. It'll go one click lower than 90 degree, but you want it right there, so it's horizontal, and it slides in right here onto the um, hot shoe um, and it has this rotating uh, collar and when you rotate it um, counterclockwise it lifts a pin out to allow it to s slide in when you rotate it clockwise going down like this uh, that pin comes out and it prevents it from removing so you do have to unscrew this in a counterclockwise as you look down and to, oh, to free this up and then it just slides straight in here and when it's fully seated you just rotate this in a 
clockwise as you look down direction to tighten it. And then that's it for the setup. And um, at this point then, it's a matter of preparing the camera for actual photography. And I'll bring it over here. Well, the lens cap has been removed, but you do need to remove the lens cap. And <clears throat> this is important with the mirrorless cameras because they're always staring through the lens. There's no shutter, really. There's a way to capture an image, but it's always looking at whatever is out there. And if you have bright lights, you don't want it to be blinded. So um, with the center channel, the lens cap has to go on vertically in order to fit or to make it easier because you use two fingers like this to, to insert it and to remove it I would just squeeze it and pull it out like that that's how you take the lens cap off and when you're not using the camera definitely put the lens cap on and for the center uh, lighting channel this is on a hinge to allow it to get into the closest position possible when the lens cap is removed so after removing the lens cap you bring this down and you can get a really close angle like 15 or 20 degrees from the lens axis and you can choose that angle to suit <clears throat> and as I've shown these are the magnetic positionable light guides and you have these choice of angles so I'll show you again from this angle closer view um, it, you just tilt it down like this and it will lift up and then that magnet will fit into any one of these three cups that, that are also magnets and however they're very strong magnets so to put them in you start at an angle like this I'll show it this way <clears throat> Like if I want to put it on the outer one, which is 45 degrees from the lens axis, then I would start tilted back, get that magnet right into the cup, and then tilt it back up. And then once it's there, it, this will hold it at the right angle. And the, um, they also have different uh, diameter openings, so more light is allowed to hit the iris from the 45 degree position than... 30 degree which is a bit smaller and if you see here the 15 degrees even smaller aperture so that the picture is all the same brightness so you don't have to change the apertures any settings but when you do set this into the center position you take the lens cap off first because it's a pretty tight squeeze and you can just rest it in there and then tilt it up like that all right and um, same for the other side. This one is on the 30 degree position and the uh, video isn't focusing very well. So let's put it over here. There we go. Um, so to change this lighting angle, I'll do it from below so you can see. I just tilt it down like that, lift it up. And then I put that magnet disc into a different cup. Like let's say I want 45 degrees. I put it in there. And then when it rests fully seated, it will be very firm, firmly in place. There's like no wiggle room there. That's exactly 45 degrees. But it's a lot faster than dealing with three wing nuts on each side. It just takes too long. And then again here, you when the lens cap is out, you can actually get it into the 15 degree socket quite easily. And that's perfect for center lighting. If you want the reflection to fall entirely in the pupil at the center, use 15 degrees lateral side lighting. And that is how you set up the camera for the different lighting options. And the focus track is good to, one thing good to know is that it has a scale here. Um, um, and you want to position it so that there's 20 centimeter, 20 millimeters here, or two centimeters, and two centimeters on this side, and that works out perfectly because it goes um, to 170 and it's 120 um, millimeters long. This bracket here, the slider clamp, it's technically called. So you want this centered. So there's two centimeters here and two centimeters there. And then as for the position for most people, 
you want it right on the 40 millimeter point and um, that will be just about right 40 millimeters um, plus or minus a couple millimeters and when you turn this um, if you turn it clockwise from the operator's standpoint the photographer's standpoint clockwise will bring it back and counterclockwise will bring it forward and there is a scale on here for uh, hundredths of a turn um, but each turn on this one is a fa fast um, relatively fast travel so each turn moves at four millimeters and since every iris is going to be within a couple millimeters from the camera you you generally don't have to turn it more than a, a turn each way to cover everybody but it's very stable here and so that's what's good and it's necessary because the camera itself is going to be um, something like about uh, five and three quarter pounds or 2.8 kilos and that refers to the part that uh, is mounted with this attachment here. You can remove this. And this is the entire iris camera right here. And that could be used in a handheld mode for animals or children or people in a wheelchair. You can definitely take pictures. You would normally put one hand under the camera like this when you take it. Um, but that is the complete system right there while batteries are good there's batteries here in the focusing light and batteries in the flash and one battery in the camera now the camera battery will be charged up through the USB-C connection that's the upper socket here just keep it attached to the computer and it'll trickle charge the battery um, this is the HDMI port, mini HDMI, and this is the shutter socket. And um, But about the batteries here, the way this illuminator is designed, the focusing light is modular, so it's easy to, to take the uh, controller off and disconnect the LED light. Or you can uh, use other lights. You can make your own if you like. Um, but in here there's three uh, AAA batteries that are removed with that Phillips screwdriver and then you just slide this uh, in the direction of the arrow that's printed. Well, it's kind of hard to see but there's a little arrow there. <laughs> and um, there it is. You want to go in that direction towards the screw head when you slide it off. And then there's those three. And then these are the two magnets that will allow it to fit onto this socket here. And this is, um, the little socket is for the LED light. And the bigger one is for a DC cord if you want to power it with the transformer, a well transformer, or a USB cord, which is five volts. This takes five volts on a type N barrel connector. And that cord is supplied, but that snaps right into place there, and this snaps in here, and you don't generally need to remove that. Um, the other part about the shutter is that it is a slider here to choose which of the three channels to use, and you can see how that works from the front view, um, where this is, you know, that's got to go down a little bit. Um, and push it back here so you can see how that works. And this is the center position. This is on the left side. There's a detent there to hold it. And it just moves a half inch each way. And basically that's all there is to the setup and the operation. As I mentioned, to, to power up the camera you will uh, just turn the, the power knob here and then press this now the the flash will go to sleep after a while but if you press it and hold it for two seconds it'll come on and it'll say M you want M for manual and for the camera I use F22 and ISO 100 for most all the pictures if you want to get uh, brighter pictures you can use you can change the ISO that's probably the best way to brighten up your picture 
Um, there's also exposure compensation and the aperture will have an effect on the brightness of the picture as well. But f22 is pretty optimal for getting the most depth of field without too much um, diffraction blurring, which happens with the larger numbers. But for sclera or, or larger areas that are curved, you may want more depth of field and you can roll this uh, lens up to um, for 51, actually aperture 51 there. And so, but I usually leave it on 22 for most irises in blue and brown. Uh, you can dial in a smaller number, but don't go below 16 or you hardly any of the iris will be in focus, but you can do 16, 18, 20, or 22. And um, that's those are the settings guideline. Also, the battery uh, is on the bottom. The memory card is right here. I'll turn off the camera, which you always do before removing the memory card. And then you just push it in like that and it comes out. And this is a compact flash express type B. And uh, those are super fast. And you push it in till it stops and let, it clicks into place. Then the door, you slide it shut and then you push it forwards and it'll click into closure. The battery is underneath here. I'll show you that from above you. And you can just slide it out like that. Um, if you use the USB cord, it'll recharge it, so you won't need to change that. And that is how you use and set up the camera and operate it. There will be another video to show the use of it with a computer. But that is the camera here and with its chin rest and the newest model, the multi-angle side lighting from Miles Research in Escondido, California. Go to milesresearch.com although I have a new website coming out that will replace that. But uh, this is all the best model here and it's a Z7 Nikon 45 megapixel Z7 with a M macro lens 105 and a 35 millimeter extension tube and that's all the best setup if you want to reach me send an email to john j-o-n at milesresearch.com and talk to you later